Well, let me ask you then, so as young, eager minds, you know, entering the hospitality workforce, I'd love to hear what everyone's kind of initial impressions were. Were there any, you know, surprises at your first job? I mean, how has it all kind of gone since um, you've either, you know, obviously some people, you're doing internships perhaps, or TAMA students, but, and you said you were, you've worked at this, the, uh, the Ritz-Carlton, right, in St. Four Louis? Four Seasons. Four Seasons, my apologies. Yes. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> um, yeah. I already messed up. Um, but what are your kind of overall, I'd love to hear kind of initial impressions of being in history. Well, the Four Seasons was uh, my first job in a hotel setting, and it really does come at you fast. Yeah. But um, if you're really eager and uh, willing to participate, it's something you can really get into. And I've enjoyed my experience so far because it gave me the opportunity to really see what things are from the ground level. Mm -hmm. And being able to participate on that level, yeah. I see nothing but possibilities for my future because I know where I know how to I know how to operate at that level, so right. I'm definitely seeing the capabilities of learning everything I need to know about operations before I go into future leadership. Right. Well, it must be nice working at, at Four Seasons. And not uh, you haven't worked in a Motel Six yet? No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a different experience for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the benefits about learning at this level. You want to be able to. Uh, gain and assimilate all the necessary skills to yeah. participate at, at every at every level, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Anyone else initial? I think almost uh, bouncing off what Tam said, just like the amount of opportunities. I think Ryan's a good example of this too. Um, one of the things that surprised me was that the level of turnover that I've been told about is accurate. Mm -hmm. um, it is really high, but it's not just bad tur turnover. It's people getting more like better opportunities yeah um, and I think that's both you know a challenge for operations but for individuals that are looking to grow within the industry I think that's great that there all are always those opportunities yeah and you're moving up the ranks which I mean, actually that's a good question show of hands how many of you are still in your first hospitality job and ha or ha first hospitality job still so everyone's kind of you know had it had a initial job and then moved somewhere else um, okay, cool. Same I've been company, different position. same company, different position. Okay, but you've there, there's. I think that's the one the great thing about the hospitality industry. No matter what, you can start. I mean, a lot of the CEOs, um, you know, Eric Danzer, who's now the, the CEO of Trump Hotels, whether he likes it or not, um, <laughs> he started as a, a, a bellman. You know, I think Steve Joyce, the choice was a was a was a dishwasher. So I mean, it's amazing that you can start at such a kind of. Um, I mean, these jobs are so important to the to the industry, but you can start at that level and be in the C-suite, but you know, so it's it's amazing. Anyone else with Ryan, how about you give us your impression then? Yeah, initial impression, I would say it was, uh, it was interesting just, you know, coming from not having worked in a hotel and having this um, <coughs> developed, you know, degree and then going in and I think you, initially you want to come out of the gates and go right into your first management role, you know, right out of college. Right. Um, that's not really the case. I think as a lot of people have found out um, that you don't just get into that and I think you can get lucky and get into like an MIT program but mm -hmm. those positions are so few and far between that it's it's hard so after getting you know some front office experience I think that that was for me it was the best way to go to get that you know like you speak of that foundational experience and really understand the ins and outs of the industry yeah I mean no one started at the BP level right you kind of have to work your way mm -hmm. through the ranks mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. What um so I mean some I guess those are some of the challenges. What what are the big opportunities as you see it in the, in the industry for yourselves and as you kind of develop your career? Any any uh, insight there? What the opportunities I, are? I would say the biggest opportunity is continuing your own self development, um, finding employers that are willing to spend the dollars and continuing to invest within their product, and then after that, you know, I think that they're hesitant to make those investments because, like you said, the turnover is so high mm -hmm. and people are so willing to take their skills to another place um, that they see as a better fit. Yeah. Anyone else want to jump in? I think um, just with technology playing the role that it does today, I actually really think that that creates a much more level playing field than it did in the past because you may be just, I think, a year or two out of college or um, you know, still in college even, but, you know, youth and experience with technology can sometimes give you an advantage, I, I've found anyway, over people who've got 20 years of experience in the industry um, in a way that I don't think was really possible mm -hmm. um, even just a couple of years ago. So right. that was something that um, I think, I guess, surprised me was that 
my youth was an asset in sure. a certain sense um, and provided a lot of opportunity. Well, you guys, you, at some point, 20 years down the line, you'll be taking their jobs anyway. They won't be around, <laughs> yeah. so they need you guys to kind of backfill. Hopefully less time. <laughs> yeah, you know. exactly. Less time, right, yeah, it should be taking you, you guys, you know, f five years in your in the C-suite. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, so um, yeah, coming from the human resources side or people operations, as they say now, um, I think our biggest opportunity is, you know, in hospitality, the whole focus is personalizing the guest experience. But my guest is obviously the employee. So how do I personalize the employee experience and make that... Um, you know, it's no more, you know, the blanket benefits, it's no more the blanket experience. It's very much about, you know, you as an individual in this organization, what does your experience look like? Mm -hmm. What benefits do you need to, to feel satisfied and whole in the organization versus another employee? So, you know, I've done, a, um, and Four Seasons has done a lot of research on what does the benefit package look like um, to employees these days? Um, you know, is it tuition reimbursement? Is it child care? is it focusing more on you know your 401k right we four seasons has been around for 50 years so we have a lot of people on a very different um, point in time in their life and how do you make a robust plan that doesn't br uh, break the bank but also you know is, is beneficial so for me it's personalizing the employee experience have you met bill gates by the way no i have not okay. but i hear he's lovely that's um, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what i heard well. uh, sorry candace i know you wanted to make a point earlier yeah just kind of touching off with with what ryan said excuse me um being a department head in an operations um kind of on the other side of it i mean you see it's a lot of people starting for an office it's the hub of most departments and where the, the people come from essentially mm -hmm. so it's really trying to find that like pick and choose like you said everybody has to have passion when it comes to especially like hotels they don't have that passion they're not going to last and it's just kind of that's where that high turnover is right. um negatively but then it's at the same time you can find those people it's hard to find them obviously the ones that you know really have that in there and you just have to really harness that and mm -hmm. develop it and like for me with my role um i know one thing that we kind of struggle with is like really kind of taking that how do you develop them how do you mentor them right. and like still not overwork them and mm -hmm. overwhelm them because working especially at like my hotel which is so big we are incredibly busy all the time sure. not burning them out and really you know keeping them within the company uh, that that's where we find our, our biggest opportunities it's really how can we keep them with us right is it true then and you maybe you could you're really good um you can answer this but you you kind of hire for you know personality and and you can train like you were talking about before the, to check in the guest or even clean a room what it is but you have to hire a certain type of attitude oh absolutely yeah so we talk about um you know quote unquote fire in the belly so you just have to have a passion for people um you know at the end of the day it can be some grueling days but if you love people and you love service and you love what you're doing then ultimately you'll be you'll be happy and um and so that's that's what we we look for um yeah. you know and i think uh you know as you were mentioning depaul does a great job with that because they require a lot of internships they do um a lot within the real world which i think really prepares their students so they we f see a lot of fire in the belly with DePaul a lot students, of fire in the belly okay which good. is good yeah. demon deacons right so, or, or, no no sorry blue demons. Uh, the blue demons, blue demons yeah. I was thinking of Wake Forest. Yeah. My, uh, <laughs> my cousin just graduated there. I apologize. But I also yeah. think, you know, that's an opportunity for people, young professionals in the industry. It's if you have that drive and that want, I think in this industry, un, you know, which isn't similar to many others, not many other industries have this, you can succeed. If you have the drive to want to do it, um, you know, executives and management really appreciate that. And they will... <coughs> do for you. Reward you for that. Yep, exactly. And you need to use that. If you don't have the drive, you're not going to succeed. But it's available to you everywhere yeah. in this industry. So every, I, I assume everyone in this room has the drive. But go ahead, Tam, go ahead. No, it's just something that I've recently become aware of. Um, before I really considered hospitality as a career choice, um, I guess what motivated me as an individual to participate in the industry was more so just looking forward towards um, a reasonable source of income. Mm -hmm. But now that I am more focused on it, I'm more aware of how myself and my team members interact when it comes to the guest experience and what motivates us. Obviously, there are going to be, there are going to be people who, are, who have great people skills, right. but aren't motivated necessarily by the career, by the work, by the work they have to do, more so by the income. Mm -hmm. And being in a position where I'm now seeing it as a career choice, I can see 
how the variation occurs and how it affects the interaction within the industry. So it's just kind of interesting to bring up because um, when it does come towards uh, motivating young people in the industry, you can kind you kind of you can kind of assess um, on that level on that fire on the belly um, distinction on that uh, say whether it might be the financial. Um, incentive, you can kind of work with them and it's much easier to manage them when you're able to recognize those things. Yeah.